I first heard Julie's diagnosis, it felt like a gut punch. When I went for my first mammogram, I did actually consider the possibility that I had a malignancy. I had felt something strange under my arm. I knew I had not been sick and I felt that lymph node. When I was told that I had cancer, I was at school. I had just gotten done working with a few students. I was by myself and I had called the doctor back. And when he said that it was breast cancer, I was shocked. I, um, even though I had been a little prepared, you're still never totally prepared to hear that news. And I remember I had my piece of paper down and I was gonna write, write down anything that he said and I actually wrote the words as my hand is shaking. I wrote the words breast cancer. Like I was going to forget that he had told me I had breast cancer. Um, and then I started to kind of uh, lose it um, just in my mind briefly. And then I remembered that I was the only one in the room. Nobody else was there to hear what he was telling me. Honestly, in that moment when I found out it was more of a fight reaction where it was, I, I, I knew I needed to call Tom instantly. Uh, there was the moment of silence and I didn't do well with the moments of silence with everyone. So I just kept talking and I told him everything that the doctor had said. And then when I finally stopped so that he could maybe had some, maybe have had some time to process what was going on, um, he was just was very encouraging and he said, okay, we've got this. All right, we can do this. We're gonna get more information, find out what we're, what we're dealing with here and, um, and we're gonna get through this together. It didn't emotionally hit me until much, much later. Um, my students, they also had surprising reactions. Um, right away they asked if I was going to die. And I think for a lot of them, they, that's their experience with cancer. And at the beginning, I didn't really know what was going on with all of with my body. I didn't know how bad it was, but I was absolutely going to be positive for the students. I feel like she has been tough on taking those medicines and like that, going through the surgeries. She's been positive and strong all through the treatments. My treatment started with chemotherapy. I saw how it affected my mom and my dad. Looking back and, and even going through the process, I did. I lost my hair, I lost my eyebrows, I lost my eyelashes. The fatigue hit me um, pretty bad about halfway through and also halfway through I had horrible leg bone pain um, from the waist down and that was my hardest side effect to deal with because it gave me limitations on what I could do. There was a lot of information given to me that I didn't totally understand. It was scary. My husband was right there with me, holding my hand, and um, it was very overwhelming. When I went to go see Pete at Cancer Resources, I went there to ask for, uh, just to see what, what kind of services they provide. He went through and asked me a bunch of questions to make sure, had I, have I thought of this? Have I thought of this? Have I um, tapped into this kind of a resource? Do I have rides to my appointments? What does my support system look like? And then of course, there's the financial aspect as well. So he kind of went through all of those with me. The amount of encouragement and support I felt instantly and just, feeling so comfortable and knowing right off, right away the amount of knowledge uh, that this organization has about cancer, it was wonderful. Cancer Resources helped Julie and I, I, I think just because they provide so many different services. And when you're in the thick of the treatment and when you're in the thick of the diagnosis, it's, it's hard to know everything that is available to you and it's just nice to have someone right there to be able to tell you these are your options, these are things that you may not have been aware that are available to you. When you go through something hard, the amount of love and support that I received from my friends and my co-workers and then people I didn't even know, I've never even met, I, I can't even really put it into words, it was overwhelming and um, I didn't feel deserving of it. Anytime that we go through something hard, we should be using that to help others. 
because somebody else is going to be going through something hard and if you stay positive and for me I, I prayed a lot my church family was huge they would reach out to me going back to work was very hard for me I have high expectations for myself and I wanted to go back to work and to be able to do what I needed to do work tends to be an escape sometimes from any problems that we have going on. There were times when it was the students, um, the amount of joy they brought to me and the laughter and the, the love and support they, they showed um, really helped me and they definitely got my mind off of it as well. My co-workers were amazing. I could not have asked for a better group of people to work with. They surprised me though when I went back to work by having a bunch of t-shirts made with the words strong, tough, and positive. And um, they were all wearing them on the day that I came back. When someone you love or care about is going through the cancer treatment and that whole process, it's, it's difficult because you aren't always sure exactly how to support and how to be strong for them and, and what they need most. Uh, and of course, it's just difficult to watch anyone you love or care about to go through something so grueling and so difficult. My husband has been through this with me every single step of the way. He has seen me at my worst and he knows enough about me. He knows how I am in front of a lot of other people. I put the, you, you, you tough through things. I don't think I have, I don't think I cooked a meal for months, months. He has prayed with me, he has cried with me, he has been um, my humor, he's, he's, he's laughed with me. He knows that laughter for me gets me through these hard things and he knows that about my family too. I'm so thankful, I, I, I couldn't imagine going through this with anyone else by my side. He has been my rock. My next step in my cancer treatment, since I was diagnosed with the BRCA gene, I now have an increased risk of ovarian cancer as well as the breast cancer. I had my double mastectomy, um, but I still have my ovaries. If you have your ovaries removed, not only does it remove your chance of having ovarian cancer, but it also then takes down your risk of getting breast cancer again, which is possible. Um, so sometime in the next few months, I will be going to have my ovaries removed and then that will be um, really pretty much the final step of preventative and treatment care for me. To learn more about how you can support cancer resources, please visit elkartcancer.org.